Well, later this morning, the House Ways and Means Committee is holding a hearing on the Biden Hunter Biden investigation. That's right. Two witnesses will be called. We understand that's uh, Gary uh, Shapley and Joseph Zeigler. They are the IRS whistleblowers who claim the Justice Department limited a tax probe into the president's son. Mm -hmm. So for more on this, we want to bring in uh, senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge. All right, Catherine, uh, I don't think we've really been, I know I haven't been paying attention to this lately, but you have. So what new information do lawmakers hope to get out of this testimony? Well, Emory and Errol, good to be with you. The two IRS whistleblowers who first came forward to CBS News earlier this year, Gary Shapley, and Joseph Ziegler will be testifying behind closed doors at the House Ways and Means Committee. You may be wondering why it's private, why it's behind closed doors. That's because they're discussing something called 6103 information. This is highly sensitive taxpayer information. And in fact, it's a crime to discuss it publicly unless there's been permission or approval from Congress to release it. What we're hoping for here is new records from the whistleblowers and new testimony that will build upon their previous statements and we're waiting for the House Ways and Means Committee to make that transcript public because of course we want to do an independent review of what was said. Uh, I understand based on my reporting that could happen very quickly in this case, uh, perhaps even uh, as early as tomorrow. And Catherine, that is the kind of narrow congressional focus on Hunter Biden, but there's also the federal gun case he faces. Prosecutors now pushing back on Hunter Biden's efforts to subpoena documents from former President Donald Trump and former Justice Department officials. Uh, what can you tell us about that effort? Well, in recent weeks, Errol, uh, there has been a request from Hunter Biden's legal team to the federal judge in Delaware, Marianne Ellen Noreka. You'll recall that was the judge whose line of questioning led to the derailing of the plea agreement in the summer for the president's son. Uh, they've asked the judge for permission to subpoena members of the Trump administration, former President Trump, uh, Attorney General Bill Barr, and others. Uh, they believe that there was political interference in the investigation. Uh, the special counsel has now responded, uh, arguing that their filing ignores a simple truth. And it reads in part, his arguments ignore an inconvenient truth. No charges were brought against the defendant, that's Hunter Biden, during the prior administration when the subpoena recipients actually held office in the executive branch. Instead, every charge in this matter was or will be brought during the current administration. Uh, one of the arguments here is whether the investigation into the president's son, which is now going on uh, plus five years, was a se selective and vindictive prosecution. Uh, the other development we're really waiting on is whether there's going to be a decision by the special counsel to bring tax charges against Hunter Biden. Our reporting is that there is a grand jury that is considering the matter in California. And based on what the whistleblowers testified to, they felt the evidence did support uh, more serious felony tax charges in this case and, and perhaps even violations of these foreign lobbying laws uh, or FARA. Uh, for their part, uh, Hunter Biden's attorneys deny these allegations and President Biden has said consistently that he had no part in his son's business dealings. All right, we'll continue connecting with you, Catherine Herridge, as you follow this story closely. Thank you very much. You're welcome.